likes to do the things that friendly couples do. Hello. Would you look at this pile of paper that I have to read here? I'm gonna need my glasses for this. Oh, they're right here in my desk. Whoa! Oh, oh my goodness. Someone's playing a joke on me. Wait a minute. Of course. It must be Big Harbor Fool's Day. What's Big Harbor Fool's Day? See, once a year, there's a special day when we all play jokes to make each other laugh. <laughs> well, most of us. Let me tell you what happened to George last time it was Big Harbor Fool's Day. Early one morning, the tugs were sound asleep at the Great Ocean Tug and Salvage Company dock when the town clock began to toll. Time to wake up, tugboats! It was chiming. We slept too long, shouted Theodore. We're late for the morning work meeting, exclaimed Emily. Late, rumbled Voduck. How could this happen? Quickly, the tugs gathered round the dispatcher's dock. Hank was so sleepy and startled, he bumped right into George. Oops! Hey! What's going on? said George. We're late for work, said Theodore. I'm never late for work, groaned George. Oh, this is terrible. Big Harbor Fools, shouted the dispatcher. He was wearing silly pop-out glasses. You mean, said Foduck, we didn't sleep too long? I told the town clock to wake you up early, said the dispatcher, laughing merrily. Uh, it's Big Harbor Fool's Day, shouted Theodore excitedly. We almost forgot, smiled Emily. <laughs> it's our favorite day of the year, hooted Hank. It's the dumbest day of the year, grumbled George as he puffed up some smoke from his smokestack, the way he did when he was upset. Then he turned back to his dock and didn't say another word. What's the matter with George, whispered Hank. I don't know, answered Theodore. I really don't know. A little later, the tugs set off to their jobs for the day. Theodore, Hank, and George went to bring Shelburne, the sea barge, into the harbor. Shelburne had a big load of tanks, all filled with bubble bath. Theodore let out a small, sharp whistle, then hurried around behind Shelburne. Shelburne tried to see who was whistling at him, but he couldn't see anyone. Then Hank whistled from the other side and hurried behind Shelburne. Once again, Shelburne tried to see who was whistling. That's funny, he said. There's no one there. Well, Hank started laughing. And Theodore laughed, too. Big Harbor Fools! They both shouted and tooted their whistles. And everyone had a good laugh. Let's get to work, frowned George. We're wasting time. Uh, sorry, George, said Theodore. It, it was just a joke. For Big Harbor Fools Day, added Hank. Can we get to work now, repeated George. He scowled and buttoned onto Shelburne, blowing up some more smoke. Theodore, did we do something wrong? said Hank. George just doesn't like today, said Theodore. But I don't know why. In another part of the harbor, Fodok was inspecting docks to see if they were safe. He started with Donald Dock. Everything ship-shaped, Donald? said Fodok. I mean, uh, dock shape. Uh-huh, said Donald. You see, uh-huh is all Donald ever says. Emily snuck up on Fodog, then hurried away with a smile as wide as a whale. Fodog didn't see the big sign Emily had put on his back. It said, honk at me, loud. Fodog hurried off to inspect the next dock. Philip and Fillmore, the fairy twins, honked loudly at him. 
Becca, the research vessel, blew her horn. What's going on? wondered Flota. Why is everybody honking at me? And even Northumberland honked. Emily could hardly wait to see what would happen next. Fodok floated along inspecting docks, and everywhere he went, everyone honked and tooted and dinged at him. I wonder, Fodok said to himself, are my bumpers on backwards? George, Theodore, and Hank were just bringing Shelburne to his dock. Prepare to turn! called George. Preparing to turn, called Theodore. Preparing to... called Hank. Tooting his whistle at Bodock and laughing. Toot, said George. Who said toot? I said turn. Hank? Hank? But Bodock has a funny sign on him, grinned Hank. Big Harbor fools, Emily shouted at Bodock. Fodok began to spin around trying to see the sign on his back, which made everyone honk and toot and ding even louder. Will everyone please be quiet, roared George, in his biggest voice. I am trying to work. Well, the big harbor went as silent as a seashell. Everyone went back to their jobs. I have to find out why George doesn't like jokes, Theodore said to himself. After Shelburne had been docked, George set off for his next job, moving a small cargo ship. Theodore slowly floated up alongside George and cleared his throat. <clears throat> I, uh, I guess you really don't like Big Harbor Fool's Day, do you, George? Well, George just puffed up some smoke. We have some really good jokes this year, Theodore went on. I'm the biggest tug, right? said George at last. Right, replied Theodore. And I'm the strongest, too. Right? Added George. Right, agreed Theodore. So I have a very important, serious job. I don't want to be a Big Harbor fool. It's... it's silly. Well, it's fun to be silly, said Theodore. And then he added, You'd still be George, even if you were a little bit of a harbor fool, too. George seemed to think about what Theodore was saying. But then he frowned and said, Of course I would. Now ah, it's just silly. All that day, the other tugs played Big Harbor Fools jokes on each other and laughed and enjoyed themselves. They do look like they're having fun, George thought as he watched the tugs. For a moment, he wished that he was laughing along with everyone, too. But then he said, Ah, oh, they're just being silly. George finished docking the cargo ship and headed home. I'll sleep until this whole dumb day is over, he grumbled. Back at his dock, George covered himself with a blanket of his own smoke and went to sleep. George isn't having any fun today, said Theodore. I wish I knew what to do. I think the only thing that would make George happy is if Big Harbor Fool's Day was over, said Hank. A slow smile spread over Theodore's face. Hank, he said, you just gave me a great idea. I did, said Hank. I mean, I did. Uh, Theodore, what is my great idea? I know how to make George smile, said Theodore. Here's what we'll do. The other tugs turned to Theodore, and he began to explain his plan. After Theodore had explained his plan to the other tugs, he hurried over to the dispatcher's dock. Excuse me, Mr. Dispatcher, he whispered. I I've been noticing that George has been very serious all Big Harbor Fool's Day. Yes, Theodore, replied the dispatcher. I've noticed that too. Well, I've an idea, said Theodore, and then he moved closer to the dispatcher. Meanwhile, Hank and Emily were over with Shelburne the sea barge. Shelburne was just finishing unloading his big tanks of bubble bath. The tugs whispered their plan to Shelburne. Sure, 
said Shelburne slowly. Whatever you say. Quiet as can be, Hank and Emily moved Shelburne over to where George was sleeping. Shelburne lifted a big bubble bath tank with his crane and slowly began to empty it right down George's smokestack. This will be the best Tea Harbor Fool's joke ever, giggled him. The sun was almost beginning to go down when George woke up. He looked this way and that way and then the other way too. But he didn't see any big bunny tails or giant spiders or hear anyone honking or laughing. Maybe, thought George. Big Harbor Fool's Day is finally over. Right away, George began to feel better. Slowly, very slowly, he turned toward the other tugs. Well, when George saw the other tugs, he felt even better. It looked like everyone else was already asleep. No more jokes, he thought. Whew, great. Hello there, George, said the dispatcher, turning to him. How was your day? Very silly, snorted George. And I bet tomorrow will be even sillier. Tomorrow, said George. Yes, the dispatcher went on. Everyone had such a good time today that I decided that tomorrow we'll have another Big Harbor Fool's Day. Another Big Harbor Fool's Day, sputtered George. Oh, but oh no, no. George started to blow up some more smoke. And that's when the most surprising thing happened. Instead of blowing up smoke, George began to blow bubbles. What, what, what's going on? Gulped George. He couldn't believe what he was seeing. The other tugs turned to George. They were all wearing silly faces. Big Harbor Bulls! They shouted. And then George noticed the empty tank of bubble bath beside the dispatcher. I'm blowing soap bubbles, said George. Does this mean tomorrow isn't Big Harbor Fool's Day again? George was so happy about it not being Big Harbor Fool's Day again that he, he just had to grin. You sure look funny with all those bubbles coming out of your smokestack, said Theodore. I guess I'm the biggest Big Harbor Fool of them all, said George. And you know, he had to admit that being a little bit silly felt a little bit good. Especially being silly with all your friends. I guess it's pretty hard to be too serious or important with big, big bubbles coming out of your smokestack. Well, I hope that's the end of the Big Harbor Fool's Day jokes for this year. Oh. <laughs> Thanks for visiting us here in the Big Harbor. We'll see you all again next time. Oh, here's my hat. <laughs> oh, no. This must be my friend Rodney. <laughs> Bye for now. Rodney!